Hey YouTube friends, I'm Sarah Lay and this is part one of a three-part series on how to take pictures in manual mode like a pro. When I first got my camera years ago, and yes, it was a film camera because this was way, way before the digital revolution, I shot everything in auto mode. Auto mode is great when you're new to photography, but if you want full control of how your photos turn out, it's better to shoot in manual mode. To understand how photography works, we need to talk about three things, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, otherwise known together as the exposure triangle. These three things always work in tandem to help us make each photograph. Let's talk about aperture first, because it's my favorite of the three. If you want to be able to control how shallow or how deep you want the focus to be in your photos, you need to adjust your aperture. For example, if you're photographing someone or something and want your subject to stand out against a blurrier background or foreground, then it's the shallow depth of field aesthetic that you're after. I personally love this look because it creates a soft, creamy background that sets off the main subject beautifully. If you want your subject and most everything in the frame to be in focus too, then it's the deep depth of field that's important to you. Pictures of landscapes and group photos are usually the ones I want to shoot with deep focus. To control this depth of field, we adjust our aperture. What is aperture? Aperture is the size of the opening in your lens that you can make smaller or larger to control how much light enters your camera. The larger the opening of the lens, the more light you let in, which results in a shallower depth of field. The smaller the opening of the lens, the less light you let in, which results in a deeper depth of field. Aperture is measured in f-stops and it will be a bit confusing at first because everything seems a little backward. With f-stops, the higher the number of the f-stop, the smaller the lens opening, and the lower the f-stop number, the larger the lens opening. Very confusing, I know. The easiest way to remember the relationship between f-stops and depth of field is to remember this. The smaller your f-stop number, the smaller your area of focus. The larger your f-stop number, the larger your area of focus. I hope that helps. At least that makes better sense to me anyway. If you want the shallow depth of field look with a blurry background and lots of beautiful bokeh, use the widest apertures your lens allows, such as f4, f2.8 or lower. If you're after the deep depth of field look where everything is in focus, use the smaller apertures, meaning apertures with higher number f-stops, such as f8, f11, and above. Okay, that's aperture in a nutshell. Now grab your camera, set it on aperture priority mode, which is A or AV on your camera usually, and go shoot something. In this mode, you get to control the aperture and your camera will do the rest to give you a proper exposure. If you don't know how to adjust the aperture on your camera, make sure you check your camera's manual. Play with the depth of field in each photo that you take. Make sure to include something in the foreground and background of the subject. That way, you'll better see how different the images look with various aperture settings. In the next movie, we will talk about shutter speed. By the end of the series, you will master each area of the photography exposure triangle, and you will be well on your way to shoot in manual mode like a pro. If you find this helpful, please don't forget to click that thumbs up icon and subscribe to this channel for more. Thank you.